Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for Advanced Echo Teaching in Critical Care today. Um, we're going to try something a little bit different. Not 100% certain it's going to work, but we'll give it a go. So we're going to try going through some cardiac anatomy. In Australia, um, our trainees have just done the DDU exam. So this kind of marks the end of these, maybe the academic year for those sort of trying to go for the Australasian Advanced Echo qualification. So uh, as this is sort of our first session of the new academic year, I thought we'd just start with something to try and get people into the, the, the swing of things. And we're going to go through cardiac anatomy. And in particular, I'm going to try and sort of think about what we're doing in relation to transesophageal echo. But as I say, I'm trying to do two things at once. That's not my strong suit. And we'll, uh, we'll do our best. So um, let's kick it off. Uh, so when I change over onto the heart, first of all, so, guys, at the moment, I've got two different types of hearts available. Well, first of all, can, can I just show you the most amazing uh, cheese board that's ever been made that I'm about to ruin? This was given to me by my secret Santa last year. It's arguably the best present that's ever been given to me. Um, so my name is Sam Ord, and there is obviously the heart. It's amazing. So I can't think of a better tool to use for this than, uh, than this board. So thank you very much to my secret Santa. We've got two different types of hearts. We've got a lamb's heart, and we have a pig's heart. Uh, sorry, and a cow's heart. Okay, so we're going to look at both of them, and I'll probably use the, the the cow's heart for trying to look at some of the mitral valve and tricuspid valve anatomy, and we'll start off by just dissecting up a few of these hearts to try and get an idea of of the the way that it all links together. So. First things first is going to be to orientate ourselves. And try to make sure I've got this right. So that's if you're looking at someone, this is how the heart looks with an idea that you've got the base of the heart up here and you've got the apex of the heart down at the bottom, obviously. I'm going to switch it over so that we're looking at it from the top now, and I'm going to turn it so that Imagine you're, sort of, you're looking down at your own heart. So we're looking down the front, so that means that this part here is the, is the anterior, and this part here is the posterior, okay? And as we look down on the heart, we're gonna notice a couple of things. Might just cut open this. All right, so. So my left thumb in here, that's moving down into the, whoops. My left thumb, so this one here, is sitting in the left atrium. My right thumb is sitting in the right atrium. So if I poke my fingers down into it, I'm going through the mitral valve here into the left ventricle, and I'm going through, uh, in, through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. And one of the first things that I feel as I'm putting my fingers in is that they go like that. Okay, so the right ventricle could also be called the anterior ventricle. Okay, so as you push them in, the fingers go like that. Okay, next bit is let's consider these blood vessels up here. So if I take my finger and I poke it down into here, I don't know whether you can see it but it's starting to come out here. Oh, you probably can't see it, let's see. So you can see my finger going through this blood vessel, starts going down into the left ventricle. So that's our aorta, okay? It's thicker walled than the one in front of it. And the one in front of it, my fingers are probably a bit big for this one. If I join those two up, they touch, my fingers are touching there. And so that's gonna be the pulmonary artery. And I've just stuck my finger going down through there through the pulmonary valve. All right, so there's my finger going, uh, I don't know how you said. There's my finger going down through the pulmonary valve into the right ventricle. Here's my index finger going down through the, tri through the right atrium to the tricuspid valve, and they touch down in that right ventricle. I might just chop this bit off here. And this is where I try not to cut my finger off on live TV. And if anyone online is, can't see what I'm doing, just give us a holler. Uh, maybe that was better like this. So 
I'm just chopping off some of the some of the aorta there. It's trying to see down into that. See if we can have a better look at the valve. I'm trying to see what we might do is maybe cut this open actually. Before we cut it open, and I've looked at the top of the heart, let's just have a look at a bit of more of the anatomy. This thing sitting down here, this is the left atrial appendage. Let's see if I can zoom in on that a bit. <laughs> cool is that? Uh, this camera we're using, we stole off an old. Uh, an old computer that used to be used up on the ward, so rather than throwing it away, we've revolutionized its use, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so this is the left atrium, and just going to notice a couple of things. So this is sitting at the front of the heart, so again, I'm just going to orientate you if I can. So again, that was the base of the heart that we're looking at. So this is anterior at the top of your screen. So this is the left atrial appendage. And just look at all those trabeculations, those beautiful trabeculations that are sitting there in that heart. So this is why in atrial fibrillation, you can imagine if you've got a low flow state, that's where little blood clots are going to form. The next thing that's of relevance, I think, is how bad potentially we are at picking up little blood clots if you don't scan through this three-dimensional structure. You don't just take one view at 110 degrees in the upper esophageal view to try and look in the left atrial appendage. You've got to try, I, I say at least two views, but you know, you look at this kind of anatomy and you've got to be thinking, I mean, this is just on this tiny heart, it's half the size or half the diameter of the left atrium, right? We should be trying to scan through it in multiple different views and maybe this is where 3D is so important because it's not just a, it's not like an appendix I think I always thought before I looked at this stuff it was just a, you know, a little nubbin like an appendix sticking off the left atrium and here you can see with these trabeculations it's far more complex than that All right, I'm going to come back out now sweet all right, so there's the left atrial appendage. Okay, if we look back at the front of the heart, um, as we come across the front, just try and get a little bit more zoom in it. Okay. This is the atrioventricular groove, and that's where the LAD comes. Down the side down here, you can see the branches of the circumflex coming through with all their beautiful tributaries. And then the right coronary artery is going to be coming around the back. So in here is the atrioventricular groove. Maybe you can see it best right here. This is the atrioventricular groove with the LAD, uh, with the circumflex coming down into that. Back of the heart now, the posterior section. And you can see where the right coronary artery comes down there. And what I wonder if we might be able to do is to see if I chop this open, if we can find those. So what I'm going to try and do now, so there's our heart, front up there, back down here. I'm going to try and chop it open at the back and see if we can go directly between the two atria down this groove down here. I'm trying not to cut my finger off. So these hearts were very kindly supplied by the best butcher in the world. It's the East Blacksland Butcher, where I also picked up some beef sirloin while I was down there to make some picanha. I know I've got Juan from Mexico on board uh, listening at the moment. I don't know whether you're a big meat fan, Juan, but I am. Uh, I am. And so I'm going to try to do some picanha at the weekend as well. So anyway, the most amazing butcher. Okay, so I'm chopping through. Okay, but, oh, this is awesome. You're going to notice as I chop through at the back of the heart, trying to go in, down in between the two ventricles at the back of the heart, you're going to notice how incredible this structure is down here for the mitral valve. Right? So what I think I've got here is the... That's going to be the posterior medial one that I've just opened up there. Right? So that was connected like that. Uh, let me try and get it so it's 
So the heart's like that. So the anterior is at the top of your screen. Posterior is where my thumbs are. I've opened up the heart. So I've just taken out the posteromedial papillary muscle. And you'll notice that that posterior medial muscle goes to both the anterior leaflets. So this is going to be the anterior leaflet in here and the posterior leaflet, right? So you, you don't, both papillary muscles in the mitral valve go to both anterior and posterior leaflets. Okay? The blood supply is different, obviously, so that you get single blood supply to your posteromedial papillary muscle. And it's dual for the anterolateral. Yeah? So you can see that if it's sitting at the back, it's either going to be the circumflex or it'll be the right coronary, whereas the one in the front's going to have both supplied because it comes down from there and there. That's pretty cool. I think, okay, oh, this might be another, another nice little learning point here. I might just flick to my slides and just, while we're on the mitral valve. Uh, let's go through, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to talk about, so. I'll show you these ones. So I think this is a really nice example in here of primary and secondary uh, cordae. Um, uh, Okay, so primary cordae, as you can see uh, from some of these notes, they attach at the leaflet tips of the coaptation line. Okay, and their function is to mainly to help the leaflets of the mitral valve coapt. Okay, if they fail, you can get elongated and you can get a little bit of mitral regurge, a little bit of a prolapse. The secondary ones are attaching at the mid body of the leaflets. Okay, and if they rupture, you can get um, so they can rupture uh, and they can lead to the redundancy, but they won't lead to horrific sort of flails or things like that. So just bearing that in mind about the primary and secondary papillary muscles, now let's bring you back to this guy. What well, we've got here a quite nice example of the primary papillary, uh, primary cordae going to the leaflet tips, and in there it's a much stronger secondary cordae I just wonder, oh, I mean, it's, it's so intricate how... I mean, look how intricate those fibers are. I don't know how well that's coming out. But those fibers, you've got this... The, the, so these are the primary ones here, and these are the secondary ones coming up at the top. And I'm putting my, my uh, skewer in between them try and demonstrate the difference. So there's the primary and there's the secondary. But look at the web that just comes through. I'm going to, it's breaking my heart, got to chop through them. And as we fold them out, you get an idea of the, I think I've gone through the side of the cord. So here's the anterior, here's the anterior mitral valve, uh, anterior mitral valve and the smaller posterior one. So I've just therefore caused, look, there's a massive flail that I've just caused. So that is smaller, that posterior mitral valve leaflet is smaller than the anterior one. And again, showing the anterior one right next door to the left atrial appendage which sits at the front. And right next door to, where is it? So the anterior one sitting next door, oh, excuse me, have I got that a bit wrong? There's the aortic valve that's sitting in there. I think I've got that right, yeah. Yeah, the, there we go. So I'm putting my finger through the, putting my finger through and touching the antero, uh, lateral papillary muscle with the anterior mitral valve leaflet here, next door to the LA. And then the posterior one's just behind it. Cool. Um, all right, might move on for a bit. Let's try something else. Okay. Next heart. Okay, let's talk about transesophageal echo and try and get a little bit of an idea about um, what the images are. Okay, so transesophageal echo. can be a little hard to get your head around. As you put the probe in, it's going to go to go back to the go back to one of our slides. So as you put the probe in, one of the first views we're going to get is the short axis view, right? So that's as you push the probe in through the esophagus, the 
toe probe curls around behind the heart and then you're dissecting it at sort of a perpendicular angle. All right, and let's try and have a go at trying to show what that looks like because it's not always as simple and straightforward as it can. So I think if I'm trying to replicate the sort of the upper gastric short axis view, it's going to be somewhere going through the heart like that. Beautiful. And so what we'd be looking at and we're seeing it on the screen is something like that. Oops. Yeah. So let's just go from one to the other. Yeah. So you've got your LV on the right, RV on the left. Okay, a couple of things we're going to notice on this guy. So first of all, uh, this part's going to be the heart sort of it's sitting here. This part's anterior and this part's posterior. Got the LV wall that is thicker than the RV wall because the RV's to steal Emma's, uh, Emma, one of the other specialists who works here, to steal her saying. She has a chilled out ventricle. So it's a chilled out ventricle because it pumps into a low, um, low resistance uh, circulation as opposed to the LV that's got to pump out into a higher resistance circulation, the systemic circulation, and pump blood all around the body. All right. And then for we'd have our anterolateral and posteromedial papillary muscles. I think I might have cut it a little bit obliquely, but there's the anterolateral and posteromedial in there. And obviously our septum that sits in here. Um, another thing that we'll notice is, I don't know if you can see that little thing up there. So if I, I wonder if I can stick my... So I've got my uh, little skewer thing sitting through the LAD there, so it's right at the junction between the right ventricle and left ventricle, that's the LAD. And we call them epicardial blood vessels because they sit on the outside of the heart. And as you come down, you can see so how far the microcirculation would have to bring blood and nutrients down to get to, uh, these are particularly the longitudinal fibers. I, I don't know if I'll be able to show it to you on this, but obviously the LV and RV have all different myocardial fibers that go in lots and lots of different directions. The ones that are down in here are longitudinal, as in that means that they run up and down in that direction, sort of from base to apex in the heart. So those longitudinal muscle fibers sitting just in there are the furthest away from the blood vessels of the heart, right? And so that means if you can imagine if suddenly you get a blockage there, the first fibers that will pick up that you've got ischemia are going to be those ones that are the furthest away. And that's the whole reason why we think that something like strain, like global longitudinal strain, which is really sort of sensitive way of trying to pick up cardiac dysfunction, you know, it's much better than ejection fraction of picking it up because it looks at the longitudinal function of the heart and those blood vessels there are the longitudinal ones which give the longitudinal function. So if you start losing your longitudinal function of your heart, that's because those myocardial fibers are the ones that are getting messed up first. So they're often, you know, if you look at HEF-PEF or you know, heart failure preserved ejection fraction or mild ischemia or whatever. Those are the first ones that get affected. Or, you know, chemotherapy induced cardiotoxicity, you know, maybe that's where you get the, um, uh, you know, maybe it's the microcirculation gets a bit messed up or you start to impair the myocytes, you know, those are the first ones that picked up. So it's often the most sensitive way of finding LV dysfunction. Of note, I guess the, the RV has got a predominance of longitudinal fibers. Um, they all kind of mishmash in the LV, but that one's got a predominance of it, which is, I don't think you can really see the difference, but anyway. Okay, so that's the short axis view of the heart. Um, so there's the anterior bit again. Maybe we could try and maybe just do the same thing again. So there's the left atrial appendage. Look how big it is. It's huge, right? And you can see it's got a little entrance. Oh, this is great. I mean, this is, I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if I can show you. Okay, so here's the junction between the left atrium and the left atrial appendage. All right, so I'm going to chop through 
that, trying to find the junction, and I'll just chop along that junction for a sec. Oh, by the way, anyone can interrupt me if they think I'm talking rubbish or wants me to do something else. Look how thick those muscles are coming into that left atrial appendage. And those... So this is a great example um, of how many little areas and nubbins you can get into. So you'd be forgiven if you're doing a, a toe. You could just be sort of looking in here and miss the actual, you know, potentially bloody great clot that could be sitting right in there. It's probably the larger one. It's incredible. All right, and then in there. So anterior at the top of the screen, posterior at the bottom of the screen. And there's your anterior mitral valve. And in there is your smaller posterior mitral valve. And you can see just at the bottom the, in there, that's the anterolateral papillary muscle. Don't know if you can really see it. I'm just going to chop the back off the right atrium. Interesting to see that maybe the walls of the left atrium here and by my left thumb, I don't know if you can see that bit there, that looks to be a little bit bigger than your right atrium, which is interesting. Maybe I'm making that up. All right, anyway, short axis. Why don't we try the next one? Let's try, let's try a two chamber, or four chambers is probably the best one, first of all. Okay, so here we go again. So left atrial appendage up here. Front of the heart is going to be your pulmonary artery. I've got my finger in. And as I push it in, if I wiggle it around, you can see it sitting in the right ventricle. Okay. If I put my finger in the other one and poke that in there, and wriggle it around, left ventricle. All right, so there's the right ventricle, and there's the left ventricle. So there's the LAD running down there. So if we're going to try and dissect them, see if I can mess this up. I reckon it would be something like this. So right from there, so I'm going to go right from the apex of the heart, so I'm going to try and chop through it, I don't know how, so I'm going to try and go right through the apex of the heart in its longitudinal axis, I'm rolling it a little bit over so the RV is sitting at the front of the heart like it does, and then if we were at pointing that marker towards the, to the bottom of the bed, this is hopefully going to be a four chamber view. As I'm doing this, can I give a big shout out to Mark, um, who's the amazing AV guy who works up here in Studio Productions uh, in our education center. He's an absolute bloody champion. Thanks for setting this up, buddy. How did that go? Let's have a look at that. So I've got a little bit of a five chamber view here. So I've cut to anteriorly. So when I was cutting, I probably should have aimed backwards a little bit because as I've cut through, I can see here that I've got the aortic valve sitting in there. All right. So what I might be able to do is if I see if, you know, try on the next one maybe, chop that bit off. But what we can see is on the left side of the screen, it's your right ventricle, and here is your thicker walled left ventricle. I'm going to guess this is the posterior mitral valve leaflet. And if I lift that forward, I might take that bit off actually. Just going to chop off the left atrial appendage or the rest of the left atrium. 
I say I've chopped a little bit too anterior, so I think I've got in a bit of that left atrium, left atrial appendage. I'll chop that off. You got a little bit of the anterior mitral valve leaflet coming off this. At the anterolateral, that'll be the posteromedial papillary muscle we can see there, I think. So if I just chop that off, you can see these, see how these chordae flay out, flay out all directions. Okay, so that's the posteromedial papillary muscle going to both anterior and posterior leaflet. Thick walled interventricle septum, and here we come down into the maybe the anterolateral papillary muscle for the tricuspid valve, I guess, and then that would be the posteromedial. Let's have a look at that. So, oh sorry, let's keep it round right. Keep it like that. Cool. Yeah, wicked, look at that. I mean, that beautiful structure here in the right atrium coming down into the tricuspid valve. So three tricuspid valve leaflets. You've got the anterior, posterior, and septal. I'm going to guess that that's the posterior. And I've chopped off the other two. It's got a left atrial appendage, but it's small compared to the other one. You can So that's the right atrial appendage little nubbin of a thing compared to the other one. So it's often we don't worry about that as much in terms of blood clots, because look, I can sort of just open it up. It's, it's a tiny little thing. All right, and let's see if we can find some stuff in here. Yeah, check this out. All right. Oh, what's really interesting as I do that is how far the apex of the heart, sorry, I've got another view. So I just had to cut back and how far the apex of the right ventricle comes down. You know, you think it sort of stops halfway up when you're sort of looking at it, but it actually is got a sort of blind ending tube that comes always in there. It's sort of amazing that we don't get more blood clots forming in there, to be honest. And here, the heavy trabeculation that we have at the top, near the apex and all these trabeculae that come through the RV. I think... wonder if I've... Yeah, I think I've cut off the pulmonary valve. I was just trying to look for the moderator band. I was just wondering if... I thought I'd seen the moderator band in there. We'll have a go on maybe another one, see if we can open up the right ventricle and see if we can find the moderator band. Let's have a go on the other one. Let's open up the right ventricle. Um, how are we going to do this? Okay, so. Okay, so it's the base of the heart again, so I'll zoom out a little bit, see if that makes it easier. Okay, so anterior top of the screen, posterior at the back of the screen, left atrial appendage at the front, right atrium, left atrium, 
big thick walled one. Point is not easy. Big so right atrium, left atrium, left atrial appendage. Whoop. Big thick walled aorta sitting in the middle of the heart. Again, probably quite important to note that if you get infections in there, it can affect everything, right? I'll see maybe if I can get the trigone maybe in this one as well. And then this one here is the pulmonary uh, pulmonary valve. And I'm going to... Let's not do that with my knife. What I'm going to try and do is chop along the interventricle septum. And one of the reasons I'm practicing this is that I'm hoping to bring it into our advanced echo course, so I might do a shameless plug for that. And if you want to come and join us and have a go at dissecting hearts in the beautiful town of Queensland, in uh, Queenstown in New Zealand, I'm going to hopefully do that in ski season in July. So if you want to come and join us, that'd be wicked. So what I've just done there is I've cut along the interventricle septum where it joins the right ventricle, free wall joins the interventricle septum. So I've cut along... There's a little... Ah, this one's better. So this is our short axis. I've just cut along that part there. All right, to try and open up that right ventricle so we can have a look at what's happening in there. And as I've just done that, what's that? It's the moderator band, right? See this, it goes from the, so the, it's ventricle septum, across to the free wall about halfway down. All right, so it's like folded open. And there's the moderator band. So at the back, let's see if we can have a look at the, oh, that's wicked. All right, see if, can you see the papillary muscles? So I think at the, Back there is the posteromedial. Don't know if you can see at the yeah, posteromedial at the end of my little marker. Ooh. And then anterolateral. And is that the septal that's sitting in there? Again trabeculations that come down all the way through here. These are the ones that would get more prominent with pulmonary hypertension as that right ventricle tries to work harder and harder and harder. Um, I'm going to chop through the moderator band now. Okay, I'll just chop the moderator band. And again, okay, so three leaflets to the, tri to the tricuspid valve. Anterior, posterior, septal. And I tell you which is which. Well, it's got to be anterior at the front there, right? That's got to be anterior. Uh, I'm just going to try and flip around. Uh, okay, so anterior is at the top of your screen. I don't know how well this is going to come out. So anterior is at the top of your screen, if I can turn it right. So that's the anterior. Septal is there. Oh, sorry, I think I've... Septal is there. And posterior is there. It's wicked, right? Okay, let's open up the whole thing. I'm just going to chop through...
Okay, now this is interesting. So you can see I've chopped down right the way through the interventrical septum down to the apex. The apex is not made up of the right ventricle. Okay, that would fold around at the front like that. That's because this little lamb did not have pulmonary hypertension. As the right ventricle gets bigger, the apex gets taken up more and more by the right ventricle because that gets bigger and sort of overtakes it. So here you can see that the, you imagine the volume of that is about 60% the volume of what's sitting in there. So this is a normal anatomy, obviously. There's the little moderator band. I think here's our septal leaflet. Oh, this is working. Uh, there's a septal leaflet. There's a posterior, and I think this I've chopped up, just chopped through is our anterior leaflet. And again, you'll notice that from the septal papillary muscles, we've got have I got. I think you've, have you got two papillary muscles in your tricuspid valve, but you've got three leaflets? I might have got a little bit wrong. I think you've definitely got septal cordae. You know, what I'm, what I'm not finding here, and it's just really interesting, that's why it's so good doing anatomy, is that we've got two obvious papillary muscles here in terms of the anterolateral and the posteromedial papillary muscles. What we see up here is not a classic papillary muscle that we'd see sort of associated like the anterior posterior, but these are almost like, you know, septal, each one's an individual papillary muscle, right? Can you see that they're not actually attached to a single big papillary muscle like that? And so I'm just second guessing myself whether these, you'd actually call these a papillary muscle, whether you just call them, you know, cordae coming off the septum. Anyway, so I'm learning something. And again, I think primary and secondary, um, not seeing as many secondary as I did on the mitral valve, mainly we're just seeing primary ones coming to the tips of the different parts of the leaflet. But again, you've got the posteromedial papillary muscle that's sending off little cordae to the septal leaflet and to the posterior and to the anterior. And it looks like the anterior is sending off ones. I probably cut them going to, maybe that's where these little ones are here. I've cut the ones going to the septal leaflet. It's obviously going to the anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet. So you get, you know, redundancy. So you try and stop there getting regurgitation happening if one of these little suckers gets cut. And there's our moderator band. Beautiful. Um, okay, and I cut through the papillary muscle. Uh, sorry, I cut through the pulmonary valve. So pulmonary valve is, uh, let's move on to those, talk a little bit about those. So what I might try and do, I might try and do it with this one. See if I can cut through the aortic valve. Okay, so this is one half fit, and I'm just going to do another cut. So if you, sorry, let's start it again. Okay. So when we're on, when we're doing our, deep gastric view. As we pull the probe up, we're going to, I don't know whether you can see that, no. As we pull the probe up and we come further and further towards the base, I'm just going to bring you back over to this. So that was cutting through the uh, that was cutting through the gastric view, so the short axis. As we pull the probe back, we can start cutting the heart at different levels. In particular, in the upper esophageal view, which would be somewhere around here, we typically, typically go to 30 degrees, we can get our short axis view of the aortic valve. So as you push the probe in, you come down towards the apex. When you're in that gastric view, it cuts it like this. As you pull the probe, as you pull the probe back, the probe starts moving around from sort of curving around the back of the heart. It starts to come and pull up and it looks more like that at zero degrees, which is that view That. So that's the sh that's the zero degrees in the midesophageal view. And then as you pull back even further, you're going to get that view there at zero degrees. Or maybe 30, which is what we're going to try and demonstrate now. Okay, so we're going to come up to a 30 degree slice. So 
So 30 degree slice, so maybe like that. So you see I've got a little bit more there than I do there. And we'll try and cut through that. And fingers crossed. Totally bolted up. Hmm. I didn't go high enough. Can you see I'm still sitting there? Still, I'd cut through the. Sort of getting there, but I cut through the uh, mitral valve there. You can still see the mitral valve that's sitting in there, so I didn't go high enough. What I should have done is look to see where the valve was before I cut it. I uh, probably can't salvage that. How about this one? So I'm going go. Let's go a bit higher. Not too bad. Okay, LV. Mm. Just trying to see if I need to take it just a little bit more. Ooh. Balls it up again. Anyway, let's see if we can salvage something of the aortic valve in this. Oh, yeah, not bad, not bad. Oh, here we go. Okay, what I'm trying to demonstrate here. Actually, this is, this is cool. Show this. So, despite messing it up, well, I, actually, that's not going to, doesn't cut through. I'll try and make that darker. Can you see right here? Those are little cordae, right? From where I've cut through the anterior mitral valve leaflet. And what's really interesting is how close those are. So I think what I've got here is a bit of the anterior mitral valve leaflet connected to the left coronary cusp of the aortic valve. And look how close it is all related to each other. So I'm obviously sort of sitting, if we just sort of focus here on the aortic valve for a little bit, you know, here is the LVOT coming into the aortic valve. And in the aortic valve, we've got our three cusps. I think that would be the right coronary cusp. This would be our non coronary cusp. And then this would be our left coronary cusp associated with that anterior mitral valve leaflet with all the little cord air attached to it. And what we might try and do is see if we can find the way that I'm going to check that I'm not talking rubbish. Let's see if we can find coronary arteries. All right, so I thought this one was your right coronary cusp, right? And what I think we can see just there is a little entrance to your right coronary cusp. And I don't know if this is going to work or not. We can give it a go. If I stick a little needle into it, I wonder if we can inject some stuff down it and see where it goes. Oh, uh, so I got a little needle. Uh, try not to stab myself or 
cause any damage. What we really is a little blue cannula, really, isn't it? I remember that for. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Hmm. That might not have worked very well. I'll give it a bit. Got a little bit of claw hex here. I will try not to ruin any of Mark's beautiful computer equipment. How are we doing for time? I'll, I'll stop talking in a minute and we'll see if we can just inject. No, it's not really working. Uh, I guess when I'm expecting to see that should come that should come around there. Maybe the left. Maybe it'd be better if I did the LAD because I haven't chopped it. Just running because I've chopped it at the back. Oh, thank you very much. Let's see if we can thread this in there. This is where my uh, interventional cardiology colleagues will be shaking their heads as they watch me try to thread this right coronary ostium. Yeah. So we got another one. I'll tell you what, I don't know how we do. Let's try and do it on the big sucker. Okay, let's, let's, oh, here we go. Let's give him to the big guy. In the last five minutes, let's have a look at the. Look at this bad boy. We'll see if we can do it better with this. All right, so here we go. This is this is the real deal. So this is obviously a bit bigger. This is a cow's heart. Let's look at it again from the top and see if we can orientate ourselves. So first thing I look for is that massive left atrial appendage. Okay, they've done a slice right the way through the back of or the side of the heart. So it probably sits there something like this. It's a big, thick aorta leading down into your aortic valve. Front of the heart, a pulmonary valve. So if I stick my finger down through there, it meets my finger going through the right atrium here into the right ventricle. This comes down through the pulmonary valve into the right ventricle. Yeah. So if I, if we're looking down through here, oh, beautiful. <laughs> so this is the pulmonary valve. One, two, three, I think that's what this one is here, which I'll just chop now. Those are the three, three valves of the pulmonary valve. So that means that this sucker over here, big thick guy, comes down into your left ventricle. You see the big thick ventricle here. So here's your aortic valve, as opposed to our pulmonary valve, which is just next door to the much thinner right ventricle. Oh, sorry, you'll see they've absolutely mutilated this. When, they, when they're uh, butchering uh, cows and sheep in Australia, they worry about I think it's some kind of parasite that they get worried about, so they need to make sure there aren't worms and stuff in the in the meat. So they have to chop it. So we never get these beautiful ones that we where we can chop open all by ourselves. So that's just the rules. Okay, so let's find let's have a look at our aortic valve in the final bit. So here's our aortic valve. So this would be the three cusps we're looking for in here. I think they've chopped through it, so we're not going to be able to find. Let's see if we can find the right coronary one again. All right, so I'm gonna. Oh, look at this sucker. This one's a little easier to find. But that one there is our right coronary artery ostium. This might work a little bit better. Let's 
So if I stick. So what's cool is that right coronary, uh, that right cusp here, is your right coronary artery. This is the non-coronary cusp, which has no coronary artery, and therefore this must be your anterior one, which I very, I th I'm going to blame the butcher on that one. I think he's gone through it, or she has gone through it, and maybe that's in there is where the see a little sort of indentation that's where the left coronary artery would have gone so we could potentially try and find it yeah nice okay so what i've just done is sort of folded it out and this is the anterior part of it and i think this is it right in there And if I'm right, we will see fluid flowing into the LAD. So let's see if I'm right. And if I am, we'll call it quits then. So it should be coming down through this blood vessel just there. Uh, maybe I'll try it with this. That's where I then get claw hex in my eye. coming out. I think we can see the fluid just down here. That's the LAD. And as I push it through, it just pulsates. And that's the LAD. And if you can just see it, just pulsating. Right, I think that's probably about it. Um, wicked. Well, uh, I hope that was all right. That was a lot of fun from my side of things. I hope you enjoyed it as much. Um, uh, thank you very much for joining. Juan, uh, did you have anything you wanted to see or do as the person who's online at the moment? <coughs> no, no, thanks. I, I am really, really excited. It was incredible. I, actually, this is the first time I, I see a heart in this, in the, uh, this way. Never seen before. Really, really thank you for inviting me. Uh, I am really excited. And actually, you know, when we are reading the lectures with the, the books and the chapters and the papers, uh, they they um, mention that the right ventricle is completely different to the to the hmm. left ventricle. But I have never seen before. So this is. Uh, I mean, they're just so intricately sort of linked together. I completely agree, and you can't have one without the other. Uh, and yeah, I think the anatomy is sensational, isn't it? Sensational. Hey, well, thanks uh, very much for joining, Juan, and thanks for everyone uh, you know who has a look at this down the track. I hope it was useful, and uh, see you next time. See, see you next time. Thank you so much. Pleasure, Juan. See you later. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye.
If you learnt something, hit like and subscribe to our channel for more videos uploaded weekly. For bite-sized versions, follow us on Twitter at Echo Nepean and check out the tutorials. Or head over to our websites for the latest hands-on courses. Links in the channel banner. And thanks, thanks for watching. watching.